We have uh, also done that in the operations area. For example, we are moving forward with e-bikes uh, for all deliveries done by Burger King themselves, uh, not by our aggregators, but our, our own deliveries will be done through bikes uh, using e-bikes, both from uh, you know environmental uh, and sustainability point of view, but also from very good strong economics point of view. So that that makes a lot of sense for us to move that forward. So that's one of the things that uh, we have launched. Uh, you know, Kapil will share with you in a few minutes about the massive downloads that have happened just in the initial phase of our uh, BK app uh, download. Uh, our goal, again, you know, remains to take one third of the business that we're doing in delivery and put it on our app in the near future. So that remains a strong goal, and, and we'll continue working on that. Uh, Kapil will share with you some details on the BK app. Uh, the next pillar we, we shared with you last time was the BK Cafe. And uh, not only a lot of uh, people uh, outside of the company were excited about this, but the entire company is extremely excited about it. And uh, I just want to share with you today that uh, we will be pulling up some timelines. Uh, we will put some seed uh, cafes in Q3 versus Q4. So we are pulling that timeline a little ahead, uh, and you will see those uh, coming uh, through in the next quarter. Uh, as we open some uh, some cafes uh, around the country. Uh, now, you know, I wanted to make sure that people understand why we're doing this and what what BK Cafe means as a as a business. See, one is it strengthens the the breakfast day part, uh, bringing uh, you know more and more people in because they have this uh, not only the breakfast menu that Burger King is so proud of, but also the cafe environment. Uh, additionally. It also caters to those day parts between lunch and dinner. So it's a very strong business that complements our existing business. Uh, and that's why we are so excited about it. Um, so we will, uh, we will share a little more details. Kapil will talk about uh, you know, our progress on it. But from the look of it, as we have uh, finalized the menu, we have got the machines, the layouts, the first uh, you know, 75 to 100 restaurants have already been put on a map. Uh, the drawings have been completed. The equipment is uh, in the process of being, uh, you know, placed. The orders are being placed. So we are we are we are in high mode in terms of moving forward with the uh, with the cafe. And the last piece, uh, which is the the value piece, uh, which I think uh, as a brand uh, uh, you would appreciate that Burger King in India uh, is the leader in value, right? So when we did the value 1.0, uh, and Kapil is sitting right next to me here, and he'll talk about it. But when he rolled out value 1.0 in that 2017-18 uh, time frame, uh, we were able to move, uh, you know, traffic and sales up by 29%. Uh, and that was uh, the effort in that year wherein we launched uh, 1.0 value 1.0, and we got those kind of results. Now, 2.0 is, is, is a fantastic menu. It is not only something we think will do very well, as we have just put in our almost 1,000 GRPs this last uh, you know, month, uh, between July 15th and August 15th. We have, we have done a, a phenomenal job you know, buying some very good television, great ads out there that you, can, uh, that you might have already seen. But I encourage you all to go to our restaurants and try the, uh, the menu. Uh, the menu is... Uh, a stunning menu. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it actually has a very good uh, gross margin as well. Uh, there's a, there's two pieces of the menu. One is at 50 rupees, which is on television, which is about six items that uh, you know are uh, good variety uh, between wraps and a new item called volcano and uh, and burger, uh, down to you know 70 rupees uh, upgrade menu, which is on the non-veg side. So you'll see a very balanced menu when you go into our restaurant and uh, and couple will share how we're doing with that and how we're moving forward with that. So those those are my early remarks. I will obviously be throughout the entire meeting uh, and we'll take your questions towards the end. So with that said, I will turn it over back to Prashant so Prashant can kind of walk you through the rest of the presentation. Oh dear Prashant. Thanks, Raj. So, guys, I, uh, having Raj having given the executive summary, we'll move quickly to slide eight, uh, which talks about our Pan India ADS recovery. Uh, one context that we want to build for everyone, when we were thinking which is the best way to showcase our business uh, to our investors, uh, what we realized is uh, last year being a very exceptional year because of COVID, 
uh, if you would have probably tried to represent the business on a same store growth perspective, the numbers would have looked uh, you know out of whack. And uh, given that when we uh, you know came to you last time, we said that uh, this year our guidance is that uh, the team will endeavor to achieve uh, the ADS that we did on a portfolio basis in in FY20. So we are keeping that as as our goalpost in in terms of what we want to achieve in the current year. And what we have done uh, for everybody's uh, uh, understanding is all the numbers now we are trying to map, keeping that as 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 a framework. So if you if you come to slide eight, our baseline FY20 ADS we ended at one lakh ten thousand rupees, and we are representing our recovery. So our recovery, as Raj mentioned in uh, in July, was about 92 year to date. Uh, month to date, August is about 95 percent. So that's 95 percent of one lakh ten thousand is where we have recovered. Uh, if you go to slide nine, uh, because we are a pan India business, we are showcasing to you the recovery which we have done regional wise. I know a lot of you will have questions in terms of the discrepancy in the regional recovery, but this is nothing but purely base effect, so there's not much to read into this. But the West has recovered large because the base effect was uh, lower for for West. Uh, coming to slide ten. Uh, as you are seeing, then this is where I will probably draw your attention, and we are also now getting surprised at this recovery trend. If you will see the delivery recovery, which is currently standing at 173%, uh, was about 170 uh, just two months back. Where it was 170 at two months back, our dividend recovery was just 16%. But as we are ending July, uh, the delivery recovery is still 173, where the dividend has recovered from 16 to almost 60%. So currently we are seeing a significant strength in delivery recovery. Uh, as dining is recovering, uh, the delivery has still not given up and that's a very healthy thing that we are currently noticing. Uh, I will now give it to Sumit to take you quickly through our uh, financial performance. Uh, thank you, Prashant. I'll, I won't take too much time because Prashant has covered the key parameters and Raj has also covered the product parameters on the business side. Uh, as far as uh, revenue is concerned, we did a revenue of 149 crores uh, as compared to 196 crores in the previous quarter and 38 crores the year before. Obviously, those are not comparable uh, because we were impacted by uh, COVID. Uh, the key highlight here is that you know, we continue to perform strongly as far as gross margins are concerned. Uh, we were at 65.6. We continue to be over 65%. Uh, as far as the current water is concerned, and uh, and going back, you know, when we go talk about guidance, uh, we continue to believe that we should be able to achieve uh, and uh, surpass the guidance as far as gross profit is concerned. And then our restaurant EBITDA. Now we are talking about, and that this is what we will continue to do going forward as well, which is that we will continue to report our numbers on the post in the S116 phases. Uh, so that at least now the comparability between quarters and previous years continue to uh, remain uh, and it's, it's easier to kind of compare to the financial results that we publish to larger markets. Uh, so our restaurant at on a post in base basis stands at 11% and at a company level uh, it stands at uh, 1%. Uh, so with that, I would hand it over to Kapil to take us through the mar marketing updates that we have for the quarter. Thanks, Sumit, uh, and a very good afternoon to everyone on the call. Uh, while it was a tough quarter given the resurgence of the second wave and lockdowns, uh, we at Burger King State focused on our long-term strategy to strengthen the brand and the business. Now, last call, I spoke about the barbell strategy. On the one end of that barbell is the signature product, the Whopper, and its limited time variants. And on the other end is the value menu, which helps drive traffic, especially in dining restaurants. Now, I've shared with you that we have soft launched our stunner menu, rupee 50 stunner menu, that's on slide number 13. Through the last quarter, as Raj mentioned, we've scaled up the menu and taken on it on national media in early July, as the dining restrictions opened up and eased off in many parts of the country. This was a multimedia campaign with impact presence on top television shows in the country and an equally strong digital and social led to drive awareness of the new menu. The campaign has helped us gain momentum on dining recoveries as you saw in the previous slides. Now we've got fantastic customer feedback on our new menu and we stay committed to our long-term strategy to offer our customers unbelievable taste, highest quality products and variety at affordable prices. With that, I'll move to slide number 14 which is the other end of the barbell menu, which is the Whopper portfolio. Now, Whopper is not just about high quality, 
or a one of a kind product but we look at it as a sub brand more like an attitude that participates in cultural conversations and helps strengthen the brand burger chain now we continue to grow the wok franchise today if i you know share a number with you almost one in every three customers order a wok now that's a big, you know big start for us on the wok portfolio we continue to launch a new limited time variant every 60 days so if you were to visit a burger store today you will try the masala wopper which is inspired by indian palate and indian taste that brings me to slide number 15 as i mentioned wopper is not just a product it's an attitude now i'm happy to share that we won two awards in the last quarter from industry forums on our valentines day program which is about hashtag date the wopper where we had the matchmaking sensation seema the paria encourage millennials to break up with medi- mediocrity in their lives and choose the juicier spicier wopper and we continue to work on this you know brand building exercise now i am on slide number 16 now we la- mentioned to you last time about the two key strategic initiatives which is the bk app and the bk cafe now i'd love to share progress on both of these let me start with bk app now as raj mentioned we started work on the bk app effectively you know last quarter and started to scale that up now while we continue to work very closely with our delivery partners on category expansion tasks and to build delivery sales we also continue to build on our own platform in this quarter we have seen 130% quarter on quarter growth on the bk app sales and now over a million app downloads we continue to invest in technology and resourcing to make our app faster and more efficient I have recently rolled out version 6.2 with a host of new improvements in the ordering experience. Our app size is now under 20 MB, and we continue to improve that. In addition to the app, we continue to improve customer experience through packaging, rider tracking, and optimal store mapping. Now, as a responsible brand, one of the important experiments that we started, you know, recently doing in our select stores in Hyderabad and Delhi NCR is the use of electric bikes for our own riders. Now, as Raj mentioned, this is an environmentally friendly and an efficient means of delivery. It's a pilot, and as we learn from it, we will start to expand it to other markets in coming times. That brings me to slide number 17 and the second strategic initiative from a top-line and profitability perspective, the BK Cafe. Now, we have started BK Cafe with the same principles as we did Burger King seven years ago. That our food will be of the best quality, locally sourced coffee from the best-in-class partners. right the first step was to put in place the right talent and coffee expertise we have now one of india's four q graders and an international barista champion felix daniel who's joined us on the bk team he's working on the coffee blend and the team is now designing our cafe menu building the best in class processes for training our teams to execute a fantastic cup of coffee so we are well on track to launch the cafe concept in quarter 3 quarter 4 of this financial year In summary, we stay focused on the four key pillars: value strategy led by the Stunner menu to drive traffic, strengthening the Walker franchise and thereby strengthening the brand Burger King, building the Burger King app platform, and introducing BK Cafe as an additional occasion, thereby driving top line and margins for the business. Now, before I close this section, I would just like to reiterate on a very important topic that Raj also spoke about, and which is about the employee awareness program around COVID vaccination. as raj mentioned we have achieved almost 100% first dose and eligible second dose vaccination for our field staff and our teams continue to work diligently to make sure that all our eligible staff take their second dose to ensure their safety and our customers peace of mind at this point i will hand over to prashant to talk us through the future outlook thanks kapil <clears throat> guys when it comes to guidance our guidance remains the same there's no big change over there as we had mentioned uh, we are planning to open the close to about 320 we should end this year with and uh, next year take this to about uh, by fy 24 take this to 470 as we said our endeavor this year is to uh, you know come back to the fy 20 areas of unlike 10000 and next year onwards we are guiding a 5 to 7% ssg our gross profit our gross margin guidance uh, remains uh, the same uh, this year we are targeting 66% and taking it to 68% by fy 24 which is without the cafes uh, with this guys we'll open up the floor for q and a uh, would request idel wise to open the floor thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon. My first question is on the uh, cafe format uh, that you're planning to launch within your stores. So any kind of uh, uh, modeling you have done or any kind of estimate uh, or expectation you have as to uh, how much incremental sales uh, uh, can you get per store on this base, uh, from this uh, initiative? Right. So thank you for your question. Uh, this is Raj. Uh, I'll take this one uh, and if a couple wants to add anything else. Um, look here, as I was saying, we have just pulled up to Q3. Uh, you know the uh, the rollout from Q4, and what we are doing is we will be launching some seed uh, phase in Q3, uh, and uh, we will be then you know putting in our menu and and the coffees and so forth to learn, uh, you know how how this uh, this menu does and and how we should uh, you know better it before we do the uh, you know 270 restaurants plus the restaurants that we will be building during this period. Um, now, if you look at the industry uh, wise, you know the uh, what we have learned uh, around the industry is is that this contributes about anywhere between fifteen to twenty percent of uh, of sales uh, and uh, this you know not only strengthens the practice if you do a good job strengthens the practice but it also strengthens the day part uh, between uh, break, between lunch and dinner so so you have these uh, you know snacking day parts which get very strong uh, with the launch of CAFE. So the potential of what this will do will be something that we will discover alongside yourself, uh, but I think it's very promising from what we have seen so far uh, with the industry rollout. And so, but it's how too do early to kind of guide you in terms of the numbers and what our internal expectation is. Just allow us to uh, run this business for three, six months, and uh, you know, post that we'll come back. And as you've seen, we guide on a lot of other things. We'll also guide you guys on on cafes uh, once we have run and operated this for six months. Sure. And you have 470 targeted total stores in FY24. So uh, out of those 470, how many do you think uh, will be uh, having the cafe format within them? So, so all the restaurants that we're going to be opening moving forward will all have cafes. Uh, and when we reflect back on the 272 restaurants that are open as of today, as we speak, uh, we will be then moving forward over the next few quarters to get those all to have a cafe. Uh, some of these uh, you would appreciate will have much smaller versions of the cafe, uh, and some of them will have a full-fledged, uh, you know, cafe. So we will have a format that say A, B, and C, and 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 you will see versions of that across. But the intention is at some point to to have 100% of the portfolio with cafe offerings. Sure. Uh, my second question is uh, uh, basically as per your guidance, uh, the ADS in FY23 should be about 5 to 7% higher than FY20. Leaving aside the fact that this seems to be a very conservative number, uh, but if I go along with this number with this kind of uh, ADS, what kind of uh, restaurant uh, EBITDA margins can you uh, generate? And if you can break that uh, number up into how much is coming from uh, operating leverage, that 5 to 7% extra versus FY20, how much is that adding to the margins? And how much uh, would come from your own cost-saving initiative? Uh, so thereby I can compare how much, uh, let's say, EBITDA margin expansion can come through from FY20 to 23, and what are the drivers? How much is operating leverage? How much, how much is cost-saving? And how much is gross margin? Gross margin you have anyways given. So the remaining two will help us. So Percy, uh, as, as a matter of principle, we only guide on gross margins. We don't guide on ROMs and we don't guide on uh, EBITDA margins. 
Uh, but broadly speaking, if you if you would have heard the commentary that we have given right from the time that we went public uh, to the couple of conference calls that we've done, uh, principally there are three large pillars which drive operating leverage in our business. One, as you know, is cross market, which we have guided. Second is based on the, the revenue throughput that we do, uh, we believe there will be a fair amount of operating leverage coming from the rental. As you know, when we ended March 20, our rent to revenue was about 15%. Uh, we mentioned this in the previous calls that if you look at the 270 restaurants that we have, we open almost 50% of these restaurants in FY19 and FY20. So that 50% of the portfolio that we opened in FY19 and 20 was roughly in that 12 to 13% rent to revenue ratios. As we move forward and these restaurants start contributing, you will see uh, operating leverage also kicking in from a rental perspective. And the third piece that Raj has extensively spoken uh, right through our roadshow is that uh, uh, we run this company very frugally. If you look at our corporate cost, uh, probably about 60 or crores, you can say, for the current year. And we've told and kind of not guided, but our internal view is this won't go up more than 10% every year. Uh, and if you put all this is in perspective, you'll see there is there will be a, a massive improvement both at the ROM level and at the company better level, but we don't guide on that person. See, here's my confusion, uh, Prashant. Uh, while you say that a uh, lot of your stores are very uh, young and they will ramp up and that will give operating leverage, uh, 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 but your ADS is growing at only 5 to 7% over three years. So the, here is where I find a disconnect uh, between these two statements. So your point is fair, Parasi. When we talk here for the markets, we talk on a portfolio level. We don't talk on an individual store levels. Uh, so as a portfolio level, because of the you know massive uncertainty that we've just come through, uh, we mentioned this in the last call that we are currently guiding that you know we are first wanting to recover back to where we were in FY20. Uh, basis where we today see the recovery, we are comfortable about a five to seven percent SSG. That does not mean that if the recovery is better, if more people keep coming, if we maintain this trajectory of growth, we will not come and revisit the guidance. So I am purely coming from that perspective. Which Better to kind of share with you what we honestly feel rather than just guide you for the sake of guidance, Percy. Sure, sure. Understood. Thanks. That's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thanks, Percy. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Wiki Punjabi from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just, uh, I mean, a little bit more on this SSG guidance of 5 to 7 percent for next year. Uh, now, sir, if I look at your first half, I think your first half, first quarter has been something like a 67 percent uh, ADS. I think the next quarter would be still below 100. Uh, we're talking about a flattish kind of uh, ADS for the full year versus an FY20 level, uh, which kind of, you know, as for my working tells me that you know second half would be something like uh, mid teens uh, kind of an growth in your ADS. Uh, now, e even if you could just maintain your second half run rate, I think that five to seven percent looks very easily achievable in the next year. Uh, are we being overly conservative on this SSG front for the next year, or am I getting my calculation somewhere wrong? I know, Vicky, and uh, believe me, it's not that it gives me. Uh, you know, a lot of fun to guide you lower and then over delivery. And you have to understand we run the business uh, running restaurants. We know what's happening on the ground. Give us, just be patient with us for a quarter. Uh, as I said, what we've learned uh, yeah, is, is better to, you know, uh, go with what we feel is right. Uh, and believe me, after one quarter, what you say turns out to be true. We will come and up the guidance. So we have no hesitation in doing that. But currently, when, from where we are sitting, we currently want you guys to build your model, keeping a 5 to 7% SSSG uh, in mind, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll revisit this year. Sure. Sure. Second, sir, second just... Uh, uh, I needed an uh, understanding on the cost front. Now, if I look at uh, this quarter, or to say uh, March quarter of Q last year, uh, and this is purely on the other expenses, uh, you know, we had a sales decline of 24%, but the other expenses decline was something like 8%. I can understand, you know, staff cost being much lower, but uh, I mean, staff cost seeing a very, very muted decline. But the other expenses, I thought there are quite a few variable line items sitting out there. Uh, any reasons why that this 
part of the line item didn't show as good a variability this time around. I mean, it's in, you know, in a way, if I look at uh, uh, the June quarter sales, it's like 150 crore versus the uh, December quarter sales, which was 163 crores, and other expenses still look, you know, set at a 65 crore versus the December quarter at 57 crore. So it still looks much higher than December quarter, just 8% down versus uh, March quarter, which is, you know, in a, in a, in a quarter where the sales actually declined by around 25% or 24%. Uh, yeah, I'll let Sudhir take that. Yeah, Vicky, uh, Vicky, I'll just ask that question. One is that, uh, you know, those numbers per se are uh, not comparable. The reason is that when you compare it to last year of March 21, you realize that that had a substantial uh, reduction in cost on account, on account of uh, rental savings, which kind of got adjusted as part of other expenses and other income. Uh, per se. Uh, similarly, when you do a comparison to uh, quarter one of last year, similarly the numbers were uh, quarter one of last year really there, there had there were no rent savings uh, there. Uh, and if you really compare to that, the rent kind rent reduction that we've got in June is fairly uh, is substantially lower. Like you know, I'm talking about around six crores versus a number of around 45 odd crores for the full year. So that is. Really, the big difference uh, when you try to do another expense comparison between uh, between the two periods, uh, Vicky. Okay, so beyond that, uh, you're saying that uh, most of the costs are variable, particularly rental adjustments, the saving adjustments were were there. That's the that's the reason which which is I mean we are not seeing the same kind of variable. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you simply break it down, Vicky, 65% is my gross margin, and uh, let's say this quarter I reported a 10% ROM. So there's a 55% expenditure between gross margin and draw. And what Sumit, when Sumit is coming from, essentially some part of this, a large part of this is variable in nature. So when you actually compare a quarter, uh, compared to this quarter when he's coming, these are not typically comparable because of the, you know, whole this COVID situation where restaurants are operating at very different levels, so on and so forth. Sure, sir. Okay. That's it, that's it from my side. Uh, thanks a lot for your answer. Thanks, Ricky. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Arvind Datta, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon to you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Arvind. Yeah, so my question is uh, regarding the finance cost of 167 million for the quarter, which was 163 million for the last quarter, a uh, March quarter. But as per your IPO, uh, uh, the schedule of the fund's usage, it, it said that 1649 uh, million was paid back. So why are these finance costs and what do they relate to basically? Sure. Uh, Arvind, hi, this is Subit here, and uh, yeah. I, I'll take that question. So one is that. Uh, as far as debt is concerned, you are absolutely right, Arvind. We have paid off the debt out of IPO proceeds. So as we speak today, we don't have any debt on our balance sheet. Right. Uh, this finance cost is only arising because of the way the lease rentals or the lease uh, accounting is done, where the entire future rentals gets um, uh, that's uh, capitalized by way of net present value. And then as we kind of amortize that cost, interest cost inherent sitting in that uh, lease cost comes as part of uh, finance cost. So this is purely coming out of lease accounting. There are no interest outflows on account of borrowings that are sitting on our uh, p &L. Okay, thank you. That was the question. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my uh, question. Uh, so I just wanted to understand uh, the space allocation for uh, cafes within our existing stores. So are we going to reduce uh, some of the dining space to make space for cafes? Uh, and also, if possible, if you can indicate the additional capex that would be required for this segment. So, so we have uh, basically two groups of restaurants, right? First is those that have already been built, uh, and then those that we're going to build. So we've, we've got 270 out of 700 restaurants that we're going to build, right? So the future restaurants, the plans will be done with the 
uh, cafes inside incorporated into it, right? So that's moving forward. Now, if you look backwards, uh, you know, we are, like I was saying earlier on, uh, we have A, B, C kind of platforms uh, of cafes where A would be a substantially larger cafe which would go in, in a larger uh, kind of restaurant. And then the, the smaller ones, the B and C would be uh, the ones that would, for example, go in a food court in a, in a, in a mall, uh, wherein we will just extend the counter and, and put in a cafe there. So uh, you will see different versions of it. Uh, we will start sharing, uh, you know, costs and so forth after we put a handful of these moving forward. Uh, like I said, quarter three and four is going to be our uh, rollout period for the first few. Uh, and uh, and uh, we will start guiding and sharing those numbers as we move forward. They are generally, uh, in a, you would have seen uh, the experience of cafe. Incrementally, the capex is is very minuscule compared to the capex that we do for the full fledged uh, Burger King restaurant. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it won't be a significant incremental capex. Sure, thanks. So uh, uh, just to confirm, as in uh, you are indicating that we will be going for relatively higher store sizes uh, for the new stores. Um, you know, we have always uh, been very prudent in the way we have built our restaurants. If you reflect on the sizes we have looked at, uh, we generally look anywhere between 1,800 and 2,400. Uh, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to stay more closer to the 2400 uh, versus the 1800. Uh, but the guidance of, of doing those restaurants will still be the same. Uh, where we're going to put a, a C cafe, we would still be okay with a 2200, 22,000 square feet kind of restaurant. Where we're going to put a larger, we'll, we'll be more skewed towards the 2400. Sure, that's helpful. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hiren Ved from Alchemy Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I want to know how many of your existing uh, stores are in malls, and you know, after the restrictions were lifted in Maharashtra, uh, you know, is everything operational now, and are you seeing footfalls already starting to come in? So, uh, Irene, uh, you are right. 55% uh, of our stores are currently in malls. Uh, but the malls have opened up, but they are still not kind of completely opened up. I was yesterday at a mall where if you are not double jab, they are not allowing you. So, th the fine tuning is still going on. You also have to, Irene, keep in mind that we are all looking forward to the release of Bell Bottom coming up on 19th August. Let's see if that happens. Uh, so currently, a lot of the dining recovery that you are seeing is 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 not purely mall led. It's still high street led. Takeaways is doing well, and which is what I was uh, you know, essentially telling others when they kind of you know kept asking me to up the guidance for next year. We are all looking forward to these malls, you know, opening full fledged multiplexes starting. A lot of our food court restaurants are next to the exits of multiplexes, and therefore, if multiplexes open up, it will result in a much larger business. Uh, so from that perspective, yes, the malls have opened up, but have they significantly contributed to the dining recovery? So far, answer to that is no. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashi Vora from Prabhudas Lilagar. Please go ahead. Um, hello, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, we can, Rashi. Okay. Uh, sir, would you, is it possible for you all to share the free India's uh, restaurant uh, EBITDA number and the company EBITDA number free India? As it was given in FOCU FY21, it would be really helpful if you could share the same this time. So, Rashi, as a matter of policy, we have decided now to go ahead with the post India's numbers. Uh, so, that will uh, not be possible from our side. Okay. Okay, sir. And, uh, the SSSG number this time, somehow I haven't, uh, so what will it be this time, sir? Uh, it will be a very high number, Rashi, and which is why we chose not to put this, okay. uh, because it, it's misleading to that extent, right? We are all okay. used to a 5-7% SSSG, and if I, for example, were to put a 150-160% SSSG, it just kind of 
uh, gifts. But if you want that number separately, please reach out to me. I will share that number with you. But the way we are looking at this business is if I am kind of guiding you guys that we will do on a portfolio basis 110, uh, where, do, where are we today? And that is what we will kind of come and report to you. Uh, and hopefully we will have a have a normalized FY22 starting today, which means that when we come back to you guys next year, we will have a SSSG number reporting as usual because of the uh, unfortunate last year, the SSSG kind of kind of loses its significance uh, from reporting perspective. But if you are interested, just drop an email to me, and I will I will share that number with you. Surely, sir. That was very thankful, sir. That's all from me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankita Bahedi from Newquest Capital pa Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. My question is around your slide number, uh, I think the, the one that you're talking about, uh, the delivery versus uh, dining mix. You know, it seems, the, uh, it seems uh, that the delivery overall has retained like essentially the lion's share of your overall sales mix at uh, a 60-40% kind of share in comparison to even 40-60 at the end of Q4 FY21. So um, I, I have a couple of questions. The first one being, do you see this as an overall, you know, paradigm shift in the underlying industry where you think that delivery and takeaway might continue to contribute to the lion's share of revenue going forward uh, as, as, you know, as a habit change? Uh, you know, as the, the impact and, and what is the impact that at a company level you think you might need, to, if at all you think you might need to make any structural changes around the way that you approach your business. The second is also if you could throw some light into how this recovery has happened. Is it essentially that the number of transactions is going back up, which means that people are starting to reorder? Or is it more driven by the average transaction size, which means that people are basically ordering larger, uh, you know, larger orders instead of more number of people who are ordering? Sorry, I didn't get her name. Okay. Thank you for the question, Ashita. Um, if you if you look at those numbers, first let me give you the reality, right? So while close to you know 80, 90 percent of our restaurants were open for delivery in this last quarter that uh, that uh, that you're looking the slide at, um, majority of the stores were either not open for dine-in or open to limited hours and nights. So the recovery on dine-in has been you know constricted by the fact that the restaurants are not open to people, right? Because of the COVID uh, regulations, state by state, city by city and so forth, right? But delivery was much more open. So delivery kind of, uh, you know, recovered much faster. In fact, recovered, recovered over what we were doing in the, in the past years. Uh, now, as things open up, uh, this is going to level out. Uh, uh, you know, earlier Prashant was saying that 55% of our portfolio is in malls. Uh, these are these once the malls open up and 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 the movies release and people get out to shopping, uh, you know these experiences are dining uh, experiences, right? These are experiences where people will be in the restaurant, they will eat in the restaurant, and they will, uh, those will be dining sales. And similarly, you have restaurants on highways uh, wherein people are you know going and traveling, and and they will have those experiences on the on in dining in those restaurants on the, on the freeways. So you will find the recovery uh, of, uh, of uh, our dine-in sales in, in as, as things open up, uh, coming and catching up with the previous uh, years, uh, F20 and, and previous to that, uh, and then ho hopefully su surpassing that, right? Um, as far as, you know, the future, if you look at, you know, the next five years, ten years, post-COVID years uh, as, as, as where your question is coming from, I think this is going to very well land somewhere where it used to be in the past. Uh, they might be slight skewed, uh, and that's why we as a company have prepared, uh, put in a, our own app uh, in place, in addition to continuing to grow with our aggregators as well. So that machinery is already in place, and, and we will continue to kind of service our, our, our consumers, our guests, uh, through that uh, you know channel of business. But as we you know open up, I think a lot of the sales just inherent because of the way we are positioned in malls as well as on freeways and, and even in high streets, 
uh, that these businesses, you know, whether you're taking a break, uh, you know, for lunch uh, from your office, uh, coming down, getting out of the office and uh, taking a quick bite, uh, all these things will continue to happen, uh, you know, post-COVID. I don't think there is going to be a, a, a dramatic shift in uh, consumer habits in the long run uh, because of COVID. I think there might be small, uh, you know, uh, changes for the interim period, which would be the graduating years before we reach complete uh, full open up or uh, full, uh, you know, extension of our business. But that will be interim, and and uh, and we are fully as a company with our app, with our aggregators, fully, uh, you know, plan to do this. Your last uh, piece was on the check. Uh, which is uh, your question was whether the check was uh, was driven because more people were ordering. Yes, some of that is potentially possible, uh, wherein you know you have uh, people ordering food uh, and uh, because of the lockdown, the, both the parents are in the house and they are ordering. And once they go to work, they will be ordering in a in a smaller. Uh, amount because they're now split between two different workplaces versus being together at home. Uh, so that you will, you might see some of that, but you will see a uh, traffic increased uh, dramatically at that point. And, and the ADS will, won't be affected, uh, will, will actually grow, uh, in, in my view. And, uh, w one of the, you know, big, big things that we have seen during this COVID is, is a lot of shift from, you know, the, Casual uh, mom and pops to to these uh, you know chained uh, you know outlets because of you know the behavior of the uh, consumer uh, that wants to make sure that what they're eating in is sanitary and then and, uh, and that they have a, a good idea what which brands are behind that. So we've seen that shift already, and I think we'll continue to see that. I hope I've okay. answered uh, all three or four questions you had in there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's helpful. Thanks. That's helpful to me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Peter Shah from Smart Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just one question pertaining to your uh, the BK Cafe. So you would have built institutional intelligence on the learning curve of uh, Cafe extension by other QSR chains, both locally and globally. So just wanted to understand from that, uh, does it add on incremental ticket size alone uh, in, in terms of uh, throughput or is it margin and ROC accretive as well? That's first question. And then second, a uh, follow-up on that is how much alteration does it require on the back end in terms of RM sourcing, talent pool integration from training perspective? Yeah, very nice questions. Very good questions. Uh, I was outlining earlier, and I'll, I'll reinstate that uh, that remark again so that uh, you can reflect on it. Uh, if you look at this business, it, 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 the reason that more and more people are looking into getting into the cafe as part of their already existing offering is it's a very complementary business. Uh, it, it not only strengthens, uh, you know, what in, in, in traditionally, if you look at the the business of here in India for breakfast is much smaller than the business of breakfast outside of India for most brands. So what it does is it actually, you know, uh, uh, takes that business and makes it stronger uh, for 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 the for the restaurant. But then it also addresses these businesses between lunch and dinner day parts, which we call as snacking. You know, pre-dinner snacking, post-dinner snacking, or pre-lunch snacking. And it really uh, strengthens that business. It provides, uh, you know, opportunities for people to come in and, you know, actually instead of having a full lunch, but actually just have a, a pastry or a coffee, uh, brings frequency of use of the brand significantly high. So when frequency of use of the brand goes up, then, you know, reflecting on that, you will see that more and more menu items are discovered, more and more menu items are purchased, different day parts are uh, you know, used up in the, in the restaurant. So you will find synergies coming together once this cafe brings in, and it brings in more traffic in because it fills in these day parts that were not being filled in earlier. Uh, because, you know, the, the cafe experience was not there. So you will see a traffic increase. It actually, you know, you pay rent for the entire day, right? You, you pay a rent for the, the time you're open, 
and for the time you're closed and for time you're not doing business and time you're doing business. So what this does is it actually makes your business and your traffic into your restaurant more uniform. So you start leveraging and, and doing more business during those which we, you would call them as valleys. Uh, so I should, I can add to what Raj mentioned. So, you know, if we are successful in, 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 in our cafe strategy, it will drive incremental ADS. Uh, it will drive incremental gross margin because cafes are fundamentally higher gross margin than the product. And because the incremental capex that I was mentioning is very low, the ROIs on this are massive. Uh, means, uh, you know, from a, from a uh, you know, Burger King uh, restaurant business, which has a between five and six year payback, cafes probably will have a three to six month uh, kind of a payback uh, scenario. So across the board, it's, it's a great business to kind of uh, be in. Uh, yes, we will have to go and compete in the market to ourselves, and that's the effort that you know all of us are together trying to put in. Yeah, and if we can comment on the second question, second part of the question on uh, alteration required in the menu and and the uh, talent pool uh, uh, constraint, if any. Yeah, so so the menu you know is is a very cafe menu. Uh, you will not find as many food items like uh, you know wraps and such because we already sell them right so so you're not uh, so we build a very strong uh, beverage menu which is uh, which is part of this and a good strong dessert menu uh, but you know like other cafes that are standalone cafes uh, we don't need to deviate a lot from our existing food menu that we already serve uh, which includes wraps it includes burgers and such uh, so it will be mostly focused on dessert uh, kind of experiences as well as a very strong beverage menu. Uh, from training point of view, you know, uh, cafes, you know, are staffed with uh, potentially very, uh, you know, a fraction of what we do in our real business. So we are taking existing our employees uh, that are already, uh, you know, working and uh, running our restaurants, and we are training them on through our <coughs> through. The people that we have already hired that are experts uh, earlier on uh, you know we were talking about Felix who's uh, uh, who, who works with couple very closely who's a, who's a award-winning uh, barista he's putting a, a small training team together but our employees that will run these cafes will be part of uh, our employee force that's already there in the restaurants Fair enough, uh, very detailed answer. Uh, just one follow-up on that. So if I see uh, uh, the, the breakfast uh, side of the demand, and uh, if we see even packaged food industry has not been able to crack it in India because breakfast is something which I believe traditional Indians take very personally and in terms of we don't deviate much. So do you believe that with, the, with no alteration in the menu, we'll be able to cater to demand which is very rigid in some form versus rest of the day menu that, that is very flexible? Yeah, so breakfast, uh, you know, it, it is specific with the, where the location is. For example, breakfast will become very strong in highway restaurants as people leave cities earlier and they get out of the city and then have breakfast at, at uh, you know, one of our locations before, you know, heading on the rest of their journey. Those, uh, those, those restaurants are designed not only with drive throughs to, to allow that, but also with larger washrooms, uh, for people to get off their cars and get a good experience of of having breakfast. So breakfast, you know, in in my view, I think we have we have we have seen in other global markets when you start actually putting effort. You know, there's been markets that I've run in the past where breakfast was four or five percent, and when we put focus on it and start developing it up, uh, it moved to ten percent and fifteen percent and even twenty percent. Uh, so it, it it is a day part that is is available. Uh, just a focus and some time period of, uh, you know, uh, emphasis on continuing to provide good service during those day parts will continue to build that business. It does take time to build that business, uh, but surely that business is there. Just to add to what Raj said, this couple, we already have egg as a part of our portfolio menu, which will play a big role in developing this breakfast menu. Thank you, Mr. Shami. We request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Jay Kumar Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I joined late, so in case if my question has already been answered, you can let me know, and I will go back and uh, revisit the transcript. 
Uh, I just want to understand, uh, you know, if you can share some more data or give us some color on how Stunner Menu is helping you acquire new customers. And, uh, you know, uh, you've expanded the Whopper range, you know, uh, with the launch of Junior Whopper. So how is it helping premiumization? Because I think there is a significant marketing as well as uh, sort of innovation at the, both the ends to drive customer acquisition as well as premiumization. Uh, if you can share some uh, more color on how it has helped you uh, with some data points. So, uh, hi, this is Kapil. I'll take this question. Let me start with the Whopper first. We did a campaign on the Whopper, you know, in uh, in December, January, uh, and we repeated that uh, with another sort of tag-along trial offer. And we shared with you in the last call that the Whopper awareness has grown up to almost 55%. And today, one in every three customers that I shared in the presentation is trying a Whopper, right? Within that Whopper portfolio, almost 20% of sale is coming from the Whopper limited time variants, which are premium price above the Whopper, right? So that's an exercise that we started in December of last year, increasing awareness around Whopper, the quality, the layers in the product, the taste experience that you get, uh, coupled with a trial offer and continuous focus on driving, building that portfolio. We've come to this stage where almost one in every three customer tries the Whopper. Right. So that's the exercise on the Whopper and building the premium end on the on the menu. On the stunner, it's early days. We've been on air until this, you know literally last week. We've seen you know tremendous response on the products. Today we are selling you know a significant part of our value menu through the stunner menu. I think this menu will settle down. It's just coming off a campaign. Give us a couple of more sort of months to report on the progress on the menu. But so far we're seeing good traction from the customers and a good share of sales on the stunner menu as a part of our value uh, value layer. Do you at any point of time? Uh, Sorry, Jaisha, one just uh, for uh, everybody who's listening here, uh, product-wise details is just one thing that we we generally at Burger King don't share on investor calls from a competitive dynamics perspective, uh, and which is where we'll only be able to give you anecdotal color on on, on questions on those lines. Uh, just uh, just wanted to kind of uh, bring that out. Uh, the, uh, the uh, on standard, just a quick follow-up. Do you think that uh, you know? Uh, uh, are you in position to track uh, whether it is uh, you know helping in customer acquisition or whether it is uh, uh, you know whether it also you know if the product is too good and the price point is very attractive it can also drive some down trading and uh, so how how do you track that and uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have three pieces. If you we've, we've shared this strategy, which Kavish uh, Kapil mentioned last time, the barbell strategy. So we have something called as a, the value layer. Uh, then we have value plus, and then we have premium. Anything up to 50 is value. 51 to 100 is value plus, and above 100 is premium. Yeah, this is something that we kind of keep track on a, almost on a daily basis, and uh, there will be uh, enough evidence to suggest uh, what a stunner is doing. Two challenges. Uh, one challenge was Kapil mentioned too early in the day to kind of uh, comment on what where you are coming from. Two, even when we have the data, yeah, this is as I said, uh, so much of competitive dynamics involved in this. So how much we will be able to share is something we will probably think through and probably come back to you next quarter. But yes, this is something that we track almost on a daily basis. I can add a little bit of color there to what Prashant said in couple that you know what we've seen traction on the stunner menu is that we haven't seen to your point on the check decline, we haven't seen a dramatic check decline on stunner. We actually been able to maintain very healthy check. The point is that these fifty and seventy rupee menu items, one is the customer is trying coming in and trying them on their own in a meal or you know in a group size of two to three. The other is these are getting added on as you know trial items or incremental products in the current basket. Right, so it's working both ways, and we haven't seen a dramatic check decline on these tunnel orders. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time and joining this call. I know a lot of your questions on our same story, and the fact that we are conservative, but uh, believe me, guys. Uh, uh, you know, we will come back to you as and when we uh, will revise this. We will continue to share data with you, which we think will help you understand our business better. And look forward to interacting with all of you guys uh, uh, with our second quarter conference call. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Edelweiss Securities Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.